Today we're going to take a closer look at the fascinating life of an incredibly wealthy and a very, very powerful botanist. So the botanist that I'm referring to, he actually graces the old paper $5 note, and this is Joseph Banks. Joseph Banks developed a keen interest in botanicals and all sorts of flora and fauna uh, in his early teens, and it was in his early 20s that he went on his first expedition. The year was 1766, and he was only 25 years old. This expedition went through Labrador and Newfoundland. Something worth noting was the vast wealth that Joseph Banks possessed. When he was just 21 years old, he inherited Reevesby Estate. Now, I'll put up some images of it so you can get an idea for, uh, you know, uh, just the scale of this, this area. He was very, very well off, and in his mid-twenties, he was on a wage of £6,000 per month. Now, I don't know, uh, you might have to check with an inflation calculator, but that's a significant sum of money back in the late 1700s to be on on a monthly basis. So he was very well off and very powerful. Now, how does Joseph Banks fit into Australian history? So Joseph Banks found himself on board the Endeavour with Captain James Cook, and I was fascinated to learn that he was probably a considerably more powerful character than James Cook at the time. So when, often when people look back at Australian history, James Cook is quite a prominent figure, and as a result, I think it's safe to, for a lot of people to assume that on board that vessel, he was, you know, the most wealthy and powerful character. But that was not the case. Joseph Banks actually brought on board four servants with him for the trip, and he was quite a bit wealthier than, than Captain Cook at the time. It was actually in Botany Bay that Captain Cook decided to give the place its name uh, as a result of the amount of botanicals that Joseph Banks found and recorded. It was quite a lot at the time. And another fun fact, in 1770, Joseph Banks recorded the first written sighting of a kangaroo. This was at a time when the endeavour was undergoing much needed repairs as a result of hitting a coral reef. Unsurprisingly, Joseph Banks was also a key figure in establishing the Royal Botanical Gardens in Kew. Joseph Banks was also a prolific writer, and a number of his letters and writings have been preserved and have formed a great form of insight for people looking back to see what life was like back then, and a lot of his research documents are still around today. Joseph Banks was also the longest standing president of the Royal Society. He was president from 1778, right up into his passing in 1820. There are also a number of famous Australian locations, as well as some plants that bear the name of Joseph Banks. Here's a list of just a couple. So Joseph Banks was a prolific figure in the world of botany. I don't think there are any botanists nowadays that are quite as famous or nearly as powerful as he was back in his time. But there you go, there's a bit of an overview as to this very, very wealthy and very powerful character that you've seen on the old $5 notes. You may not have recognised who he is, but now you know a little bit about him. So I hope you enjoy this series. I look forward to exploring characters on all of the old Australian paper banknotes because I think it's an area that's worth talking about. And particularly if you're starting up a collection of old banknotes, it's nice to know who you're looking at on these particular notes. So if you like this series, please give it a like. Uh, give me a comment if you learnt something new in this video today. And thank you very much for watching. We'll see you in the next one.